Today we will be solving this problem called collecting numbers 2. It is a continuation of collecting numbers. So I'd recommend solving that problem before solving this one. And I will put a link to the video editorial for this problem in the description box. So check it out if you want. So we are given an array that contains each number between 1 and n exactly once and our task is to collect the numbers from 1 to n in increasing order. On each round, we go through the array from left to right and collect as many numbers as possible. And given m operations that swap two numbers in the array, our task is to report the number of rounds after each operation. So basically collecting numbers was just this without updates and now we have to perform m operations and report the answer after each operation. So the first line of our input contains two integers n and m that range from 1 to 2 times 10 to the fifth and the second line contains our array of n integers then follow m queries containing each line containing two integers left and right that we would swap. So this is our sample example. So let's try to solve it. So basically what we need to do, in each round we will go through the array and collect as many numbers as we can. So in the first round we need to start with one, so we'll go through our array until we find one. So we'll take one, now we would want to take 2, but we can't find it in the remaining of the array. So in the first pass we just took 1. So let's start another round and now we need 2. Here is 2, so we found it. And now we need 3, so let's see if we can find 3 in the remaining of the array. And indeed we can find it. So in the second pass we found 2 and 3. And in the third pass we'll go through our array again. So we'll find 4 and now we need 5 so we'll go through the array and indeed we can find 5. So the answer for this problem without updates will be 3 because we needed 3 passes to find uh, to collect all the numbers. And instead of going through uh, the array each time and doing this operation there is actually a correlation between this number and the number of inversions in our array. So an inversion is uh, concerns permutations and it happens when two values like here 1 and 2. 2 is larger than 1 but 2 appears before 1. So if let's say ai is greater than aj but position of so pause of i is less than pause of j then this is considered to be a, an inversion and here we have an inversion of 1 and 2 we also have an inversion of 3 and 4 and we are only concerned with inversions of consecutive numbers so basically since the position of 2 is before the position of 1, this means that we will need to start another round to collect 2 after collecting 1. And you can see the inversions when we move like this. Here we had to start over because the position of 2 came before the position of 1. And the same thing here. The position of 3 came before or, or uh, it's, the position of 4 came before the position of 3. So basically this is the way to solve this problem without inversions and in order to count the number of inversions we would require to know the position of each array or, or, or of each value. So in order to do that I will declare a, a vector of size n and at each position like for each value I will store its position. So this is my value, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the positions are the following. The position of 1 is 3, the position of 2 is 2, the position of 3 is 5, 4 is at position 1, and 5 is at position 4. 
So I'll just go through all pairs. So one and two, there is an inversion. So I'll count it. Two and three, these indices are fine. So I'll just move on. Three and four, five uh, is greater than one. So there is another inversion. And four and five, there is no inversion here. So my answer is, is two plus one because I always require a one to go through my array and I have to add two additional passes. So the inversions count the additional passes. So my final answer will be three. But now how can we take care of these updates or of these queries? So as we can see here, our answer, if we change the position of two, this will only change the inversions of two with respect to one and with respect to three. So each value is only, uh, the, uh, only affects the values that are adjacent to it. So here, in, the, in this first case, I'm going to change values at position two and three. So the pairs that will be affected by this are one and two, two and three, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the previous value to 1 is 0, so it does not count, and the previous value to 2 is 1. So I already mentioned it here. So basically, what I need to do, I need since, since the order will change, I will first have to undo the changes that I did before. So since the positions will change, I will go see for 1 and 2, was there an inversion before? And the answer is yes. So I have to undo this inversion because maybe when I swap them, it does not exist anymore. So I'll just erase this and I'll check for two and three. Was there an inversion before? And the answer is no. So I have not, I, ha I don't have to undo anything. And now I'll go ahead and perform this swap. So two and one will change positions. So one will come here and two will come here. And now I also have to update their positions. So the position of two becomes three and the position of one becomes two. And now I will have to check these pairs again to see if I have any new inversions now after this swap. So one and two, is there an inversion here? And the answer is no. So that's fine. What about two and three? Is there an inversion? And the answer is no. So I, I have only my initial one plus one inversion that came from three and five. So my answer here is two. And if we check in the first pass, we will collect one, two and three. And in the second pass, we'll collect four and five. So indeed our answer is two. So now we'll move on to the next operation. So we'll swap values at position one and five. So we'll swap this with this. And here again, we'll find all the pairs that are concerned by this swap. Since I am swapping four, I have to check the pair that is uh, that includes four and its previous value. So three and four and four and its next value. So four and five. And I will also have to check the value uh, of three and its previous value. So two and three and three and its next value. So three and four. And I will have to undo all inversions that were caused by these pairs. But suppose see here we have three and four formed an inversion. So I will have to take one away from here because of this. And again, I will take it away from here because of this, because three and four happened twice. But we shouldn't count it twice because this pair should be only counted once. So that's why these pairs, when we generate them, we have to keep only the unique ones. And the, uh, the data structure that we saw that would allow us to do this is a set. So I will put these values that I generate in a set so that I only retain the unique ones. And if these values are in a set, then this will not be inserted at all because it only exists, it already existed in my set. 
So here, my first pair is 3 and 4. Was there an inversion before? And the answer is yes, so I undo it. And what about 4 and 5? Uh, they did not uh, have an inversion before, so that's fine. And 2 and 3 is fine as well. And now I perform my swap. So I bring 3 here and 4 here. And now I also have to update the position. So 3 is at position now, is at position 1 now, and 4 is at position 5. So now I had to check these pairs again and see if I created any new inversions. So first I'll check 3 and 4. No one is less than 5, so that does not uh, cause an inversion. What about 4 and 5? Here we have an inversion because 5 is less than 4. So I have to add one here. What about 2 and 3? That created another inversion. So in total we have 3. We would require 3 moves now. And to check that that's correct. So first we'll go to our array. We'll collect 1 and 2. Then we will collect 3 and 4. And finally we'll collect 5. So indeed we require 3 moves for this. Now let's check out our last operation. So now we are concerned with positions 2 and 3, the same as the first operations. So this and this. So again, let's find out the pairs that are concerned by this. So the previous value of 1 is 0, but it's out of our range, so we will not consider it. And the next value is 2, so we'll consider 1, 2. And now for 2, the previous value is 1, so we have to consider the pair 1, 2, but it's already counted, so we will not add it. And the next value to 2 is 3, so we, we will have this 2, 3. So as we did before, we will check for these pairs if they had any inversions before. 1 and 2, that are in the correct order, so did not have an inversion, but 2 and 3 had an inversion. So we have to undo this. And now we will perform our swap. So 2 comes here and 1 comes here. And we have to update the positions. So the position of 2 becomes 2 and the position of, three become, of 1 becomes 3. And I have to check these pairs again to, ch to, to see if I created any new inversions. So 1 and 2 are not in the correct order. So that's a new inversion and 2 and 3 are not in the correct order so that's another new inversion so in total I need 4 moves to collect all these numbers in this order and to check for this in the first move we will in the first pass we'll collect 1 and then in the second pass we will be only be able to collect 2 and in the last pass we will collect 3 and 4 but we are not done, so we would require an additional pass to collect 5. So indeed, in total, we required 4 moves. So in terms of complexity, each move requires, requires us to create this set with 4 elements. So its size is, is small, it's 4, and it's not dependent of n. So it, we can just consider that as a constant factor. And we just perform swaps, that's in all of one. And that's pretty much it. So basically, uh, we achieve this in all of one. We required all of one first to find the initial value of this, uh, like the, the required moves to solve this without operations, plus all of Q times, say, 4, or something like that. So in total, our complexity is linear. So that's pretty much it. Now let's check out the code. So this is our program. We'll start by reading n and q. And then we will declare a vector of values of size n plus 1. I'm going to have this vector 1 indexed, so I don't have to change the positions of the queries that I'm going to read. And I'm going to have another vectors of size n plus 1 that I will use to remember the positions of the values. 
then I will declare, I will look through my n values from 1 to n included. I will read my value and I will state that the position of this value is at position i. Then I will initialize my answer with 1 because as we said we always need at least one pass to to uh, collect all the numbers. So the answer will be 1 plus the number of inversions. Then I will look through all the values from 1 to n not included because n does not have an i plus 1 and I will add to my answer the number of inversions that I will calculate by this. So if position of i is greater than position of i plus 1 then this will return 1 and I will increment my answer by it. Otherwise this will return 0 and my answer won't change. Then I will declare two variables left and right that I will keep reading for my queries and this and I will also declare my set of pair of int int that I will call updated pairs. So this is this set that will, I use to solve the problem. Then I will go inside my loop. So each time I read left and right, then I check if the value, uh, the value at position L plus 1 is less than or equal to N. This means I can add, I, this pair is valid, so I can insert values at position L plus values at position L plus 1. Then I'll check if values minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So I check if it's valid, then I also insert it into my set and I do the same with R. And now I will do the inversions that, was, that were caused by these pairs before. So for each pair in my set, I call them swapped. I will undo any inversions that was caused by them. So if swap.first is greater than swap.second, I'll just minus that from my answer. And now I will perform the swap using the swap function in C++. And this function swaps two values in O of 1. Then I will change the positions of my values L and R. And I will update their positions to L and R. And now, after all these updates, I will count again, I will increment my answer by the swaps that would be caused by these swapped values again. And after this, my answer is up to date, so I just print it. And don't forget to clear your set so you could, answer as new, you could insert new pairs in it for the next query. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.